Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop here. There's just the two of us right now, me and Mitch, Mitch behind the camera. Today we're doing Erumaki. And what came in yesterday was my new shock springs. I've been waiting quite a while, about a couple months for these. I was promised them and they got held up for some reason. So this is the spring that was on it. This one is a little lighter. This is a, a custom spring that I ordered for the work shocks. And I wasn't happy with the weight of these and also the length. So when you order a spring, they want to know certain things. They want to know the length of the spring. They want to know the ID because it has to fit around something. So these happen to be 1.8 inches. I specified the number of, of coils. You count the coils, one, two, three, four, so on. And my last springs I had on my race bike, they had seven coils. So I wanted to match that up. So I told them seven coils and they got everything right except for the number of the coils. And they talked about the formula for the spring rate. The spring rate that I asked for is 45 to 50 pounds. What that means is that when you press down one inch and you read the scale, that gives you the spring rate. So. Over in my arbor press, right over here, I have my bathroom scale set up. It's a very accurate bathroom scale. I want you to know that. So there we go. We're on zero right now. I got my piece of cardboard. That's one inch shorter. This piece of aluminum, it just spreads the load on the ram a little bit. Okay, so right about there. And we're on... 49 pounds so that's perfect because what i asked them for my last spring was 45 pounds and i asked them if okay okay don't go lower than 45 but go between 45 and 50 so they they got that right so we'll say that's a 49 pound spring next step we're going to do this is the bottom that holds the spring that's how the shock goes like that this piece fits over. Can you see how that fits on like that? And then this, and then the rubber bumper comes down. And this is really large and I don't want it that big. This is the one that I took off of Ruby Racer and it started out the same. So can you see that? See how much smaller this one is? So we're gonna machine this down and when it gets machined down, we're gonna lose a little weight. So that's kind of hard to hold. So what I did, I made up a fixture, or you could call it a spigot, and that'll go on like, like that. And there's a bolt that holds that on. And then we'll go over to the lathe and we'll machine that down. That's the first step. So now we need to make a little shoulder here. There is a little shoulder. We need a larger shoulder. That's what's going to hold the sleeve. We're also making one of these. This is made out of, out of Delrin. It's light. This piece has to fit over that. I think you could call that a good fit. Still bright, my favorite paint, black. No, I'm not sponsored yet. So what I did here, every, every time you want to paint something, you have to hold it somehow. You don't want to hold something in your hand. So I took a dowel, I wrapped around some masking tape, 
that's pretty simple, isn't it, for a holder. So I want to spray this because while we work on this, it's going to dry and then we can assemble the whole shock. I didn't want this to be shiny. I know there's going to be comments, where's my mask? If I have a mask, how can I talk to you? So it's just a quick shot. And that's it, we are done. I'll put that over by the heater. When we come back, it'll be beautiful. It'll be satin, a satin finish. That's what we want. I'm gonna hold it in the chuck. First thing I'm gonna do is the machine down the OD, flip it over, machine down the OD and then I'm going to start to make the actual piece. So I'm going to make it. That's what it's going to look like. We're going to bore out the middle and then I cut it off. We flip it round and we make that shoulder there. That's where the spring fits. See that? That's where the spring fits. So the Delrin is holding up the spring and the Delrin does that just fine. You know, some of the viewers have been asking for a sharpening video and I have been watching sharpening videos and at first I thought, is the world really needing another sharpening video? But apparently, yes, yes we are. So stay tuned. Oh, well, it goes on a little, little bit. Oh, look at that. We've got two different sizes going on here. So I'll cut it down. Well, I'll take a little bit more off, just, just a little bit. So that's where that goes right there. Ooh. Just fits in there. It's a good fit. Okay, let's go to the bench. We're going to assemble a shock and take some measurements. We're going to we're going to weigh some things now. This is the Aramaki. It's not the Tiger Cub. On the Tiger Cub, it's a heavy bike, but on the Aramaki, we're trying to make it as light as possible. Let's go to the bench. Well, for those of you who watched the, uh, the first part of, of the shock video, we made a chart and we weighed some things. And what I've done is I made up a new chart and I put Aramaki 1, 
Eramaki 2. So you can see how the shock has, has changed from here to here. So the first thing we're going to wear is the spring. So this is the spring that came with the shock. And so the spring is actually 532.8. I had down 529 for the weight of the spring. So here is the new spring. Look at that, it's 298. That's a big weight saving because there's one spring on the left and there's one spring on the right. Okay, the spring length has been shortened. Now it's 7.5 inches. I wanted seven coils, but I got nine. That's the only thing that I could really kind of have complained about. Let's measure the wire. I'll go grab my, my caliper. Okay, this doesn't have any paint on it, but Basically, it's 0.223, so that's a thinner wire. So everything's looking good so far. So we're gonna assemble this shock right now, and then we're gonna, that's when we get our final weight, and we can see how much weight we've saved from here to here. So these springs are going to get spray painted orange like the bike. So I think it's going to look pretty sharp when it's all done. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, so let's see if this still, this one here is 1425, I believe. Oh, well, it's not, no, 1440. So scratch that, 1440. And the new shock. Is 1201. How about that, eh? 1201 grams. So that's a that's a big weight saving. If you subtract that, it, it it's 240 grams, so 480. That's over a pound that got saved. I don't know if you noticed as well. Can you see how I took off the polish? I, do, I don't like that. I don't like the look of a really polished aluminum. I like satin. So if you can use your imagination now and, and imagine that this spring is painted orange to match the bike because I've got extra paint. I think it's going to look smashing. All right, we have worked on the shock. You know what the shock's going to look like. You know we saved quite a substantial amount of weight, which, which I like. That really puts a smile on my face. A while ago, we did the outer, outer clutch plate on the Aramaki. So this is what it looked like. This is the this is made this is the factory one made out of regular steel, and then we made this lightweight one. But we had to do the holes, and at the point when, at the end of the video, I couldn't figure out how to drill the holes because what happens is, it fits over here, and it has to line up. There we go. You see how how the splines are lining up? Well, the splines just go in and then it lines up. So after the video was over, I thought about it a bit and I came up with a system of how to do it. So we're going to go over to the rotary table and what we're going to do is, do you see this? This is a, a three quarter inch rod. It's just nothing special, mild steel. Do you see how it just fits in there? I put a taper on there, a two degree taper last night in the lathe so that we can locate it. And it, it needs to be located this way. So this is gonna get held in the three jaw. We're gonna locate the hole. We're gonna use the digital readout. We're gonna zero X and Y. After we know X and Y for the hole, we're gonna take a quarter inch rod down there. Let's, we're gonna locate it. It doesn't really matter where we locate it. And then 
we're going to take this out. We're going to put this in. Hold it there. And then we're going to go back to the XY. So that's how we're going to locate the splines with those five holes. Makes sense, right? I know you're with me. See how it's just a little bit of play there and then I tighten up the vise. Okay. So we can leave the drill chuck in there because what what's going to happen is I'm going to put in a center drill now. We're going to center drill it. We're going to drill a larger hole and then we're going to use the boring bar and get the exact size we want. X and Y are back at zero now. And um, on the zero on the rotary table, got five holes. I just got Mitch to do some mental math. 360 divided by five is how much, Mitch? 72. 72. So we're going to go every 72 holes. No. <laughs> 72 degrees. Oh, this doesn't want to come out now. Okay. This is the moment of truth to see if things line up in the clutch hub. Look at that. I would say that worked out pretty darn well. That's our show for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching work on Aramaki Shock, Aramaki Clutch Hub, Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, that really supports our channel. We thank you. If you give us a big thumbs up, that's appreciated as well. And if you subscribe, if you haven't already, thank you very much. Take care. See you next time. Right, right about there. And we're a little over 50 pounds. When I checked it yesterday. Oh, hold on. I was pressing down with my hand on the scale to hold this. Okay, so I have to be very careful. Okay, I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to hold this up at the top now. Because when I did this yesterday, I got 50 pounds. And the reading just now... Okay, I'm going to hold this up here so I don't put any weight on the scale at all. That was my fault.